What is going on gamers? It's me, Dan, moderately anonymous MTG, and we're back here today with the greatest TV channel in the multiverse, and we've got some stellar guests today. We've got friends of the show, Phil Gallagher, aka Thraben U. We've got Veggie Wagon from Decked Out MTG, and we've got the one and only Tori of the Vast from the Scry Babies here with us today. We got an awesome game for you, but before we get into that, y'all know the deal. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already following us here over on YouTube. Likes and comments on the video are super helpful for getting us out in front of new eyes. If you want to see these episodes live, go follow us over on twitch.tv slash moderately anonymous MTG. And if you want some ways to support the show more directly, go hit up our Patreon and get access to our private Discord. See episodes like this early and get access to tons of bonus content here on YouTube. And of course, you can hit up our Bonfire store to get awesome merch. As always, sponsors for the show are Dragon Shield and TCG Player. If you see some cool cards you want to pick up today, or if you want some awesome sleeves or playmats to put them on, go hit up our Dragon Shield and TCG Player affiliate links right down in the video description. And without further ado, let's hop into the deck text. First up is Phil playing Kinnon Bonder Prodigy. This is a mid-range combo deck using Kinnon's ability to put creatures directly into play and combo out with infinite mana. Up next is Mod playing Tibbet Seller of Secrets. This is an Esper control deck looking to lock down the table and end the game with time sieve combos. And third is Veggie Wagon playing Ratadrabic of Urborg. This is an attrition based combo deck looking to drain its opponents for infinite life to win the game. And in last is Tori playing Najila the Blade Blossom. This is a combat based combo deck looking to land Najila early, take over the game with warriors, or win with underworld breach combos. Hey everybody, before we hop into today's video, I just want to give a special shout out to our sponsors over at BetterHelp. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. It's the beginning of 2024, it's a new year. I know y'all got new goals for yourself. I got goals for myself. I'm trying to work on my work-life balance. As a content creator, it can be tough, but I do get a lot of help from seeing a therapist. If you're thinking about starting therapy, there's never been a greater time to start than right now using our affiliate link, betterhelp.com slash modernonmtg to get you 10% off of your first month of services. Whether you've got more concrete goals like trying to get a new job or wanting to spend more time with your friends, or if you're trying to work on your inner self, get help with your anxiety, get help with your anger management issues. Talking with a licensed therapist can help you achieve those goals in ways that you never thought possible. I know getting into therapy can feel intimidating, but BetterHelp really makes it easy for you to do. With BetterHelp, you can have your session via phone call, video chat, or even messaging, whatever way is most comfortable for you. BetterHelp has a huge network of over 30,000 licensed therapists that can help you based on your needs, preferences, and location, which gives you access to a wider range of expertise than you might be able to find in your own city. To get started, you'll fill out a questionnaire that will ask you questions about what challenges you're going through and what kind of therapist you'd like, and then BetterHelp can match you with a therapist to help you. You'll be matched with a therapist in most cases within 48 hours. You can schedule therapy sessions at a time that's convenient for you. If you feel like your therapist isn't a great fit, you can switch therapists with a click of a button in your settings at no additional cost at any time. Getting into therapy was one of the most life-changing experiences that I've ever had, and I know I'm a better person every single day because of what I've learned in therapy. So if you want to join over 4 million people who have used BetterHelp services to give them a happier, healthier life, fill the link in the description, betterhelp.com slash mtg, get 10% off of your first month of services and see how much it can help you. Clicking that link is not only going to help support this channel, but also to help support you and your mental health, which is the most important thing. Thank y'all so much for watching. Let's hop into the game. Should I play a no land hand? That'd be cool, right? Does it have jeweled lotus in it? And mana crypt and a bunch of other free rocks? Maybe. If it's got jeweled lotus and mana crypt and a thing you can cast off of mana crypt that makes colored mana, I would keep it. That's how I feel. Like the rest of it's really good. I'm gonna keep it. Cool. Especially going last. Uh, anyone got a pregame? None for me. All right. Let's do this. Good luck, have fun. Cast Chromox. Imprint a crop rotation. Emergence zone. Soul ring. Mox opal. Get the fuck out of here. Stop. Phil. God damn, I wish I had the mind break trap in this hand. <laughs> Blue green. Kennen. With that, I'll pass the turn. Let's go. Marsh flats is the land for turn. I'll crack it and go to 39. Get myself a tundra. A soul ring. Cast a grim monolith. And I'll pass from there. Draw for turn. I'll play Vault of Champions and pass the turn. I'm going to play this Mana Crypt, Burnished Citadel, this Lotus Petal, tap this for red, this for two colorless, and cast Najila. And that's it for now. Two, three, four, five, six, Exile and Elvish Spirit Guide. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cast a Nyx Bloom Ancient Combat. I am going to give Mod a Love Tap for two, and then I'll pass the turn. Bloodstained Mire, crack. Go to 36, get myself a Scrubland. You should do nothing. No, I have like a couple options. I'm going to do at least one of them. Okay. Although one of the options is doing nothing, so. I tried. I politicked. <laughs> it's like hanging out with Ian all over again. One floating here. I'm going to cast Dauntless Dismantler. One here for Mana Vault, and then I'll pass. Okay. Draw. Play uh, an Exotic Orchard. Pay two Felwar Stone. 
and Comes I will pass the turn. Comes untapped. Wagonius, at your end step, I would like to activate Dismantler now for X is equal to zero. I'm going to float four blue mana. I am going to cast this Deadly Rollick, hmm. targeting the next blue mage. I'll use one of my floating mana to swan song it. Tried to get me. But I, did. I didn't get that. Right. <laughs> no one can get to I'm going to untap my No one can get me. I'm going to cast a Ragavan. And then I guess I'll go to combat and I will attack Veggie with Najila and a 1 1 warrior. And I'll send three, my four. flying 2 2 in the air at Phil. I'll take it. And then I'll pass from there. If Phil draws <laughs> uh, at 9 mana, I'll draw, say we're fucked. Yeah, that would, be, that would be real cool. Mod, I'll love tap you for two again. I'll play an Ottawara and then a Grim Monolith. Pass the turn. That's mana. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. I'll keep draw. I hope not. Uh, Watery Grave, untapped to 32. I'd like to attempt to put one country Tivit Seller of Secrets on the stack. Vote in time, everyone. Go to the booth. Uh, I'm going to vote for two treasures. How many cards do you have in hand, Mod? Three in hand. We yes. probably want to collude here. Yeah. I think probably in every instance. It's possible that we're supposed to dump entirely into treasure here. It's kind of weird that Mod went treasure immediately. Maybe that's yeah. an indication of like a blue counter spell, like a mana drain or equivalent. Another point for treasures is that if Tori has a Dockside Extortionist, I can uh, get them all out of the way of it. Yep, I'm on board with that. I, I think it's treasures. Uh, I'll, I'll go with you. One of them for a Mystic Remora. Mm -hmm. And that's it, I'm gonna pass. Absolutely no surprise, but Phil, very, very keen playing here. Leaves me immediately going for the treasures, says to himself, what makes the most sense to be in Dan's hand if he's going for treasures? How many cards in hand do we already have? These are all super relevant questions, all things that you want to be asking yourself and the table and the Tibbet player when Tibbet is coming down on boarding your voting. And of course, the Mystic Remora is what I was trying to get down in this situation. And ultimately, Phil makes the correct call here that the mana production is obviously not my bottleneck in this scenario. Uh, play Silent Clearing. Pay four, I'll take one from the clearing for the one ring. Oh, geez. Bigger. Seems good. Good by me. Uh, and yeah, cannot pay. Okay, uh, let's draw a card. Yeah, I'll pass turn. I guess I'm gonna go to combat. I'm going to attack Veggie. I'm so sorry. Because you're the only one who doesn't have like blockers. I'm gonna attack you with Najila, my warrior, and Ragavan, and my bird. We well, should probably hold up the Ragavan and the bird. Why? He's got protection from everything. Oh, that's right. I was just gonna let it go. <laughs> eh, you know, we're all friends here. This is a similar situation to something that we talked about last week on the show, but but Tori is a new Najila player. Najila can be kind of difficult to pilot, especially when you're figuring out the early stages of where the new warriors and everything go. And I don't want her to pick up any bad habits, so definitely willing to give up some percentage points to get Tori a little bit better understanding of how her deck works. Plus, you know, it just makes for a better game. Look, I really want this treasure. I really need this treasure. Phil, listen, buddy. I know, <laughs> I know, I tried to get you before you tried to get me, but. If you that let was, this that was a long time through, ago. That's, that's in the past. Even, yeah. It's in the past. Yeah. I think if you let this Ragavan connect, I think it'd be really good for like, us. Is it helpful to the table? Yeah, because I don't have mana to like do something when Mod tries to win again. Is the Ragavan attacking me? It would like to. I'm going to attack you with Ragavan and hope and pray that let well, me get Well, you should also pressure. definitely attack Veggie with your Najila and Warriors, because then you get your Warriors still. Oh, OK. That's what I thought. OK, so I can get my two Warriors. And I'm gonna attack you with Ragavan and hope you let this happen. That way, you know, I can cast some of the counters when an ad nauseum comes around. Or... I don't play that one. Veggie goes crazy, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Veggie goes crazy. <laughs> Veggie goes crazy. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna snap block the Ragavan. Oh, all right, all right. I don't care about the foolish, treasure token. Foolish but mistake. Like... Randomly you know ripping one of my critical cards off my deck would be. It wouldn't even real hurt bad. you. It wouldn't even hurt you. <laughs> I can't have one land. This is against the spirit of the game commander. Um, <laughs> true, I'm gonna make some more warriors. I'm calling Gavin now. I should have flipped the bird at you, but if it blocks, good thing. I guess that's that. Okay, Part you of the cards. Green stores off the top. I will unfortunately be passing the turn. Mystic mm -hmm. Remora trigger at my upkeep. I will pay for it, and then I'll move to my draw. Let's go to combat. Phil, I would like to strike mm -hmm. you for six damage. I will take that. Voting time. I'm going to vote two clues this time. And I think we stay on treasure. My my gut is to make it clues at this point. All right, I'm, I'll vote clue. I, I guess I'll, I'll have vote. to vote clue. Let's crack one of them dang clues. Gemstone Caverns. Like to leave one floating and cast a sevens reclamation targeting my dude in the graveyard. Dauntless Dismantler. Yep. Cool. Sacrifice that dude to a diabolic intent. Yep. Cool. It, it, it's time save, right? It's just time save attempt win. Uh, yeah, because I can knock out at least like, I'm going to guess like four turns against you. And that'll probably be enough to find Thassa's Oracle to win through the, the one ring. 
Just the idea. I'm going to cast this card. It's time stuff. Yeah, this is pseudo infinite turns. So if you have interaction, this is the moment. Well, then if that lands, I would like to sacrifice one, two, three, four, five artifacts to put an extra turn on the stack. I want to soul partition Tori's bird. Uh, and then I'll move to my extra turn if that's okay. Heads up, I'm about to take a lot of extra turns. So I sped up this section a little bit. Enjoy. Remora trigger. We're going to pay. I'm going to go to combat and I'm going to hit Tori this time for six. Vote for two clues. I think it's treasure because the, the way that mod beats you is finding something that wins through the one ring. So um, so then we'll sacrifice four treasures and I'm going to cast this Chromox and sacrifice that as well. Go to our extra turn. I don't think there's a reason to keep their more around. Draw. Combat. Go. I'll yep, sacrifice the five things that I have accrued. Draw card. One of these. Draw card. One of these. And draw a card with one of the tap. I have now hit Phil and Tori both twice. Tori this time. Mm -hmm. I make the things, I sacrifice them, cast a fairy, I'll minus on the soul ring, draw a card, cast soul ring, cast a lotus petal, move to my next turn, draw, land, combat is filled this time, sacrifice the treasures, stuff, uptick, next turn, draw, uptick, Tori, this is third time for the both of you now, graph cage, extra turn, land for turn, okay, now we're going to play an Esper Sentinel, uh, gonna kill Phil, so I'll make one fewer Before you kill me, I will make infinite colorless mana. Okay, legal. <laughs> um, that's gonna leave me with one fewer thing this time, so I'm gonna have to sacrifice a real permanent, and it's gonna be this Esper Sentinel. I will uptick, go to my next turn, draw, and swept teeth, and crack it, go to 31. Uh, we'll get this hell of them. Untapped, 29. Combat, Tori, I would like to kill you. Yes, I'm dead. I'm gonna make three things this time between me and Veggie. I am going to, I'm gonna say two treasures, because I would. I'm, I might use them. I will still vote treasure. I'm gonna use the fairy to balance Tibbet to my hands. Draw a card. And six, to cast Tibbet again, ETBs, and we vote again. And uh, I'll vote treasures again. Yeah, treasure. Sacrifice cage, soul ring, and three of these. Take an extra turn. Got exactly five artifacts to sacrifice this time sieve. I've got seven wreck in the graveyard to flash back the time sieve, so maybe that's just okay. Let's try out. Sacrifice five artifacts. Take an extra turn. Five mana to flash back time sieve. Soul ring is fine, I guess. And then I'll move to might be my last final turn. I got into his land for turn. Double blue to cast a transmute artifact. And I'm going to float two off the soul ring. And hopefully I run Wishclaw Talisman. Uh, it will be this Wishclaw Talisman sacrificing the soul ring and paying one extra mana. I will use the one mana to activate the Wishclaw Talisman. I'll give that to you, Veggie. I'm going to get you. this uh, dark ritual, make three black mana, leave one floating and use this gemstone caverns to cast the will ritual again. Oh, I know what to do. Okay. White to cast Esper Sentinel. Two black to sacrifice it to Diabolic Intent. I'm going to get Displacer Kitten. I'm going to cast Displacer Kitten. And then I'm going to cast Chrome Mox out of my graveyard. And that's going to start a loop with Displacer Kitten and Teferi, where I'll be able to uh, continually bounce my zero mana artifact, draw through my deck, and eventually I'll draw Thassa's Oracle and cast it. That'll do. Cool. That'll do. That'll do. I appreciate everyone's patience. Well, nice, sweet game. That was a wild one. So if you remember from the opening hands, Veggie actually had a Chrome Ox in hand that entire time. It was really just looking for any color card off the top that it could imprint under that. And his plan was to go for the one ring a turn earlier than he actually got it down. But that route would have led to him getting blown up by the Dauntless Dismantler. And that stumble in mana production actually created this really interesting situation of how do you win through the one ring with your tippet? And of course the answer is, as it is to everything in CDH, that's his Oracle, why not? But it was honestly super tight. I almost didn't make it. The Transmute Artifact was the very last top deck that I got off on my library. We went through, I think 13 or 14 draws there. And if that hadn't been the top deck at the last one, I would have had to have passed a veggie and I might not have won the game. So very interesting scenario there. Big thank you to my guests for coming and hanging out. This was a super fun game. We got some more coming up from this one. If you want to catch the rest of the games for this night, make sure you go hit up our Patreon. You can get access to full stream VODs on a secret playlist right here on YouTube. And if you want to support the guests, make sure you go down the video description, find links to all of their work down there. Thank you all so much for watching with me today and we'll catch you next time, everybody. Be good to yourselves. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, one of the best ways to support us is by leaving a comment and hitting that like and subscribe button. It's incredibly helpful and always appreciated. If you want to support the channel more directly, join our Patreon to catch episodes early, join our private Discord, and get some other awesome benefits. One final thank you to all of our patrons who make great content like this possible. And thank you for watching. Be good to yourself, everyone.